Welcome to the Heuristic Lab video tutorial how to create user-defined problems. In this tutorial I will show you how you can create a new custom problem in Heuristic Lab, choose an appropriate solution encoding, define the parameters of the problem and implement an evaluation function. As a simple example of a combinatorial optimization problem, I have chosen the well-known N Queens problem where the goal is to place N Queens on an N times N chessboard in such a way that no two queens threaten each other. To create a new user-defined problem, click on File New to open the New Item dialog and select User-defined problem from the Problems section. After a new user-defined problem instance has been created, we can start to define the problem's parameters. For the N queens problem, we need to define one new parameter named N, which represents the number of queens and also the size of the chessboard. Therefore, click on the plus symbol on top of the parameters list to add a new parameter. In the shown dialog, we first have to select the data type of the new parameter, where value parameter of t is usually a good choice for problem parameters. In a value parameter, the parameter value is stored directly inside the parameter and can be freely set in the GUI. If you are unsure which parameter data type to choose, please have a look at the parameter type descriptions shown in the dialog. After selecting value parameter of t, we have to define the data type t of the parameter value. Therefore, select the t type parameter and click on the edit button to choose the required data type. In our case, the n parameter of the n queens problem is a simple integer value, and so we search for and select int value, which is located in the Heuristic Lab Data plugin. Then we have to name the new parameter appropriately, and we can also add an optional description. For the n queens problem, the parameter is of course named n, and as a description we may add, for example, number of queens, which is the problem size. Finally, click on OK to add a new parameter to the problem and to close the dialog. If your problem requires additional parameters, repeat this procedure for each parameter. In the next step, we have to choose an appropriate solution creator operator for our problem, which is used to initialize new solutions and therefore defines the solution encoding. Heuristic Lab provides several solution encodings and corresponding solution creators out of the box, as for example binary vector encoding, real vector encoding, or permutation encoding. For the n queens problem, we want to encode solutions as permutations of length n, where each position in the permutation corresponds to a row on the chessboard, and each value represents the column of the queen in this row. So we choose the random permutation creator provided by the Heuristic Lab Encoding's Permutation Encoding plugin. The random permutation creator operator has two parameters, the length of the permutation and the permutation type. The latter one has to be set to absolute, as the absolute position in the permutation represents the chessboard rows. The length parameter of the random permutation creator has to retrieve its value from the problem parameter n, as we have n queens and therefore also n positions in each permutation. Therefore we have to set n as its actual name. The next and probably most important step is to implement a custom evaluation function. Therefore, we use a new user-defined evaluator as evaluation operator for our problem and name it appropriately. Inside the user-defined evaluator, we can add any heuristic lab operator as, for example, a programmable single successor operator which enables us to freely implement any evaluation logic we want. In the programmable operator, we again have to define the operator parameters first. For evaluating an n queen solution, the operator needs a parameter named permutation, which represents the solution to evaluate. Therefore, we add a new lookup parameter of t, which is suitable for most operator parameters, Define its type parameter t as permutation and set its name and description.
Next, we add a parameter named quality for storing the computed quality value, which is also a lookup parameter of t with the type parameter double value. Last but not least, we also add another parameter named visualization for storing a simple visualization of the evaluated solution. This parameter is again a lookup parameter of t with the type parameter string matrix. After we have added all required operator parameters, we can now continue to implement the evaluation logic. Therefore, we switch to the code tab of the programmable operator and start writing c -sharp code. First, we have to retrieve the current solution from the permutation parameter and its actual length. Then we compute the quality value of the solution by counting how many queens are threatened by each other. Because we have decided to encode solutions as permutations, it is already guaranteed that queens will not threaten each other horizontally or vertically. Therefore, we only have to check for diagonal threats and write the computed quality value to the quality parameter. Finally, we also want to create a simple visualization for the current solution as an n times n string matrix in which each position of a queen is marked by an x. So we also create a new string matrix, set the axis, and write it to the visualization parameter. Finally, we have to add the Heuristic Lab Encoding's permutation encoding assembly and the corresponding namespace in the code editor as well before we can successfully compile our custom evaluation operator. The last required step for creating a user-defined problem is to set the remaining problem parameters. We have to define whether the problem is a maximization problem or not, which is not the case for n queens. We also have to set the reasonable value for n, as for example 8, and we have to add all the solution manipulation operators that the problem should provide to any algorithm applied on it. These operators usually depend on the chosen solution encoding, and as we want to solve the n queens problem with a genetic algorithm, we have to add at least some crossover and mutation operators suitable for permutations. Finally, we name our new user-defined problem and queens, and we may also add an additional description by double-clicking on the information icon next to the name. Now everything is set and our user-defined problem is ready for action. We save it by clicking on the Save button and can then load it into an algorithm. In order to check if everything works as expected, we can open a new genetic algorithm and load the save problem. Then we can set the algorithm parameters such as the number of generations, the mutation probability, the population size or the crossover and mutation operator. Please note that the selectable crossover and mutation operators are retrieved from the operator's parameter of the problem. If some operator is missing, you have to add it to the operator's list in the problem first before it can be selected in the algorithm. Furthermore, we also have to add the best scope solution analyzer to the analysis of the algorithm, as this analyzer adds the best solution found by the algorithm to its results. After the algorithm has been properly parameterized, we can execute it by clicking on the play button, wait for a while, and have a look at the results, where we can also find the result named best solution, which contains the permutation, quality value, and also the visualization of the best solution achieved by the algorithm. This concludes the Heuristic Lab video tutorial how to create user-defined problems. I hope that you got an idea how you can extend Heuristic Lab with new optimization problems and how you can implement custom evaluation functions. Thanks for your attention, have fun, and may the global optimum be with you.